Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Grace Lorden, the host of Workforce, a podcast where we hope we earn the privilege of your time. Welcome to bonus content. And you've picked a good one. In this bonus content, you're going to get some productivity hacks. Henry Stewart is going to give you advice about how to put your email box to zero and to get happier while doing so. Let's listen to what he has to say. So you've really stripped out governance and, and checking in too often. Yes, absolutely. So there's no there's no levels of approval that are happy. You know, you just you just do it. And does that have kind of benefits for meetings? So, you know, in in some of my in some of my life, I work in a university. I do spend time in pointless meetings where it feels like we're talking about <laughs> things that people could just make decisions on without me without me being in, um, you know, in those meetings. So I wonder about the model that you have. It feels then that when people come together, it would always be for either to create or just to be happy together, just to build social cohesion. Yeah, so generally I only have one set of meetings once, once, a, once a month. You know, the rest of the time I'm fairly free and easy. Oh, you know, I might have meetings with clients, but, you know, the internal meetings are like that. Now, um, one of the key elements, though, for meetings has been, you know, we're doing the four-day week. We're, we're, yep. we're, we're, we're on the UK part of the four-day week. And that's what's really transformed meetings because people suddenly realise, you know, they don't need those long meetings. They can make them shorter. They can get do away with them. They can do do anything like that. And um, that's that's uh, what that's what's really helped with meetings. So, what made you enlist in the four day week experiment in the first place? Well, it was because we like to be at the forefront of well being. Obviously, happy. You know, with a name like happy, you have yep. to be really, don't you? Um, and there was uh, somebody wrote in a survey about uh, a year or two ago that we used to be at the forefront of well-being, but now everybody's caught up. So I thought, what can we do differently? So I thought, so um, uh, I, I thought, let's do the four-day week. Um, I fully involved people. We had a survey which was sixteen to one in favour of the four-day week. I'm not quite sure who the one was, but. Um, <laughs> Um, we therefore involved everybody, and um, it has been amazing. Um, the, the, and the key point of the four-day week, it's not about compressed hours. It's not about reducing salary. It's about getting get, having 100% of your salary for yep. 80% of the time, as long as you are 100% as productive. And, and how, do you, how do you know people are, Henry? How do we know that they're the same in respect to productivity? OK, so first of all, we did a survey and we asked people, are you as productive as you were before? And they all said yes. But of course, you might say that <laughs> they would say that. Um, but the key point is um, the me our measure of productivity is, uh, is, is income as strong as before and is uh, customer feedback as strong as before. And customer feedback is as strong as before. And we had a 42 percent increase in revenue last year with no increase in staffing. Awesome. So what uh, were people, so that, what were people yeah. giving up, Henry? What what kind of tasks were they were they dumping in order to allow them to compress being just as productive into a four day, a four day week? Well, a lot of it was meetings, you know. Um, <laughs> but also, I mean, I I do something called a productivity blitz, which is um, uh, for for a full week. I do fifteen minutes in the morning, fifteen minutes in the afternoon, um, and you do it for five for five days, and. Before we did the four-day week, nobody at Happy was particularly interested in the productivity blitz. I was doing it with clients. Um, but suddenly, they all became very interested. And what that, what that is about is about focus. It's also about meetings. It's about how to, how to deal with the email overload. Uh, I've got a great idea for that. Um, but it's about how you focus and stop being distracted by emails, by Teams, by Slack, by all that kind of stuff. How you can get real deep work done. And that, that's what it's about, because there's not, there was an article in The Economist um, which led to, to Andrew Barnes doing his four-day week, um, which reckoned that people are only focused for two and a half hours a day in the UK. Right? And in Canada, it's apparently only one and a half hours. But, um, wow. Um, and so, you know, you can get an awful lot more done simply by getting removing those distractions doing stuff like a Pomodoro technique, which is 25 minutes where you're absolutely focused, um, uh, being absolutely rigid about, about uh, your tasks um, and solving email overload. And you said you had a life hack for email overload. Do you want to share that? 
absolutely. Um, so I used to have terrible email overload, you know. And I had, I, I would have read everything in the inbox, but I wouldn't know for sure whether there wasn't something in there. You know, hundreds of hundreds of emails in there. It wasn't something in there that I needed to deal with. So the the hack for it is three two one zero, which means you uh, read your inbox three times a day. You time twenty one minutes, and you reduce it to zero, and. Every single day, I reduce my inbox to zero, and it is such a weight off my mind. Um, now, there are obviously some things which are tasks. You know, if somebody says rewrite the business plan, then that's that's a task, and that goes into my task folder. But there's only normally about ten or twelve things in in the task folder. Yeah. Um, but but to have the inbox clear, and I've done this with lots of people, and they all say it's changed their life. I love it. I love it. I do. I do. Anytime people give me a hack like the one described, I always think about the people who chase their emails after one day and they're following up straight away to see whether or not you've you've seen the original email. So now you have two emails and those people do make me quite grumpy. <laughs> they don't even, especially when it's not urgent, when they're already when they're already chasing me. But as a hack, I love it. I'm going to try it. Three, three, two, try one. It. Yeah, I will. OK, I well, will. one thing you have to do, though, is you have to take everything in your inbox and move it into an old inbox because otherwise you can't reduce to zero. Uh, but you don't have to delete it, but you just need to, to, to shift it. And if we go back to thinking about managers, Henry, I think one of the things that underlies the structure that you have in Happy is that people just really have to trust each other to get things done. They have to kind of trust yeah. each other to be working and they have to trust each other to get things done when they divide tasks. Do you have any top tips to help people other colleagues just to let go and trust each other because as human beings we do like to be in, in, in so you've really stripped out governance um, and, and checking I in mean, too the, often <clears throat> the key the key as you say is to trust people and to step away and does that to have kind of benefits for meetings so you know that, that get, in that, in some of my in some of my life i work in a university i do spend Most time in pointless meetings where it feels ownership. like we're talking about things have, that people could just make decisions on without me without ownership. me being let in um, you know, in those meetings just, so i wonder about the model that you have so it you feels say, then that when people come so together it would always be for either to create or just to be happy together just to build social cohesion and the amount we've done so when I start, stopped making decisions, um, we had been uh, flattened. We'd been flatlining for about four years, you know. In the next two years, we grew by 25%. And I do think that was because people were taking real responsibility and accountability. Yeah. And if you tell people what to do, they won't take that. They won't take that responsibility. And you might think, well, well, these people, you know, they're, you know, I need to tell them what to do because they won't do that. But if you stop telling them what to do, if you step away from it, then they will start taking that responsibility. So what made you enlist in the four day week experiment in the first place? Excellent. Yeah. Absolutely. And the crucial thing is about is about is that bit about mistakes. So we at Happy, we believe in celebrating mistakes. OK, at, <laughs> give them a hug or whatever, you know. Um, um, so, you know, for, uh, to give an example, um, we had a trainer many years ago who uh, was in his first month of, uh, of, of working. Um, and he I overheard him say to somebody um, because of Train, yep. if, if you have a bad uh, bad day, you have to come into the office and, and work out with people what the response is. And how, do you, say, how do you know um, people are, Henry? How do we uh, know that, that they're really the day, same in respect well. to productivity? And so I, I, I talked to him and I said, OK, what happened? And he said, oh, you know, I really didn't take uh, uh, responsibility for it. I, you know, I, <laughs> uh, um, I didn't prepare well enough. I didn't do this well enough, didn't do that well enough. And I, I said to him, OK, let, let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate it. I gave him a big hug. And he still remembers that many years later. But the crucial point is that he took responsibility. You can't celebrate a mistake 
if somebody so what were people uh, doesn't think it's what were people fault. giving up penry yeah. what what kind of tasks were they were they dumping in order to allow them to compress being just as productive into a four day absolutely a four day week the problem with the mistakes is normally the cover up <laughs> if you get a mistake right at the at the moment it happens you know you can you can normally deal with it straight away but if it's if if there's a cover up then that's that's norm, that's a much uh, deeper problem Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. Absolutely, and I know that that's one of the things that that um, people really appreciate at Happy. I, you know, my I, my colleague Rachel says that um, you know the fact that she, if she tries something new, if she takes a risk, and it all goes wrong, she knows that we will celebrate that mistake, um, and that that and that wow. is a huge benefit for taking risks, for taking for doing innovation, for doing new stuff. Um, whereas if you have a a culture that uh, blames people for mistakes, then they'll never do anything new. And you said you had a life hack for email overload. Do you want to share that? Yeah, I mean, I, I did write a blog on Google uh, uh, having lost, you know, what was it, 15,000 people or something? Um, and I, I, I talked about how outrageous that was because they are making 65, million, billion, 65 billion profit a year. Um, now, I don't know. That's an interesting take in it that it's, it's about middle managers. Um, um, I didn't realise. Realize, yeah. But the, Yeah. I love it. I love it. I do. I do. Anytime people give me a hack like the one described, I always think about the people who chase their emails after one day and they're following up straight away to see whether or not you've you've seen the original email. So now you have two emails and those people do make me quite grumpy when they don't even, especially when it's not urgent, when they're already when they're already chasing me. But as a hack, I love it. I'm going to try it. Three, three, two, one. <laughs> 